A baseball team plays in a stadium that holds 55,000 spectators. With ticket prices at $10, the average attendance has been 27,000. When ticket prices were lowered to $8, the average attendance rose to 33,000. Find the demand function, assume that it is linear. Okay, so we're trying to find a linear function here, which means we need to use all the information we have to try to write a linear equation. Before we do that, let's think about this logically. If there's an event and they sell tickets for a dollar, let's say, so many people will be coming that it won't be fun because there won't be enough seats for everyone. It'll be too crowded. There'll be too many people there. But take it extreme other end. Say they sell tickets for $100. Well, when they sell tickets for $100, it's going to have hardly anyone there because the ticket price is just too much. So there's a happy medium in the middle where it's not necessarily too crowded or too expensive and everyone hopefully would have an enjoyable time. So that's what we're looking at here. We're trying to figure out a demand function so that we can look along that demand function in part B to figure out how we can maximize the revenue. If more people are there, there's more cost to holding the event. If there's less people there, well, to some extent, there's less cost, but there is base cost that you'd have to cover either way. But if they have less people, then they have less money coming in. So somewhere there is a maximizing revenue number, and that's what we're trying to find. So a baseball team plays in a stadium that holds 55,000 spectators. With ticket prices at $10, the average attendance has been 27,000. When ticket prices were lowered to $8, the average attendance rose to 33,000. Now we have to figure this out here. If we think of attendance as X, and then the price would be Y, because think about it, the, the price is going to impact the attendance. So if we say that attendance is X, and then price is Y, we can look at our information and we can use it to create points. Now this is a little bit tricky here. The demand function relates the price per unit to the number of units sold. And that's the piece that has to be remembered. So that's the trick for this question. So we have to remember that a demand function relates the price per unit to the number of units sold. And this is important. Otherwise, you might have your X and Y backwards, which is going to impact writing our equation. So the demand function, the demand function relates the price per unit to the number of units sold. So that would mean that the Q, the number sold, would be X, and that's going to be our attendance. And then P would be our price, and that's our price. And that's what we're calling our Y. It gets tricky, so make sure that you're keeping it separate. So let's see if we can figure this out. So we're trying to figure out the demand function. Well, when we had a demand of our 27,000 in attendance, our price was $10. And when we had a demand from 33,000 in attendance, our price was $8. That means that we have two points here. Our first point, is becoming 27,010. And our second point, it's becoming 33,008. So we have two points. Do you see a slope equation coming on? So remember, slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So for us, our slope becomes y2, which is 10, minus y1, which is 8. Remember when we did this before? We labeled them x1, y1, x2, y2, remember? So we have y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Now, in this case, we'd have our, our equation with our 10 and our 8. It doesn't matter which of these points you call 2 and which one you call 1. So in this case, let me switch it because we called this one our second point. It doesn't matter. Either way, it will work. Oops. Either way, it will work out just fine. 
but I will switch it so that you've got the same notation. So y2, y1, x1, x2. There we go. So it doesn't matter which point you call one and which point you call two. If you had these switched right here, just make sure you have them switched in the denominator and it will still work out. So x2 we have is our 27,000 and our x1 we have is our 33. Notice, here is one point. Here is one point. That's what's important, that the x and the y are coordinated. All right, so let's solve this down. 10 minus 8, that's going to give us 2. 27 minus 33, that's going to give us 6. It'll be negative 6. I don't like the negative in the bottom, so I'm just going to put it to the top. And then if we simplify down, looks like we get negative 1 over 3,000. All right, we're trying to find an equation. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Here we go. Let's see if we can figure this out. Y minus, it doesn't matter which one of these that you use. I think I might do better multiplying by 10 than by 8, so I'm going to use the 10, but it doesn't matter. Our M that we just found is 1 over 3,000. And we have X minus, here is the one that I use, the 10 right here, so I need the 27,000. There we go. Do a little bit of distributing. And it looks like we are going to get there we go. Whoops, that's supposed to be nine. There we go. And then we need to add our ten to both sides. And then we need to put it to our demand function. So our demand function is d of q. So that means that x needs to go to q and y needs to go to our d of q. So it'll look like d of q is equal to negative one over 3000 q plus 19. So then it's asking us, how should ticket prices be set to maximize revenue? So what ticket price should they use to bring in the most money? Well, how should ticket prices be set to maximize revenue? Well, if we want to maximize our revenue, it will look like R of Q is equal to the quantity that you sell times the price you sell them at. Well, price that you sell them at is the demand function. So if we look at this one, another way of writing this would be R of Q is equal to Q times our demand of Q. And we can fill this in. We need Q times, and then our D of Q we have is negative one over 3,000 plus 19. So negative one over 3,000 Q plus 19. So that means that R of Q is going to look like negative one over 3,000, distribute your Q, Q squared plus 19 Q. So we need to maximize, see right here, maximize. So that means we're gonna need a derivative again. So bring down your power. Subtract one. There we go. So we take our derivative, we set it equal to zero. I'm gonna simplify this. So 15,000. I'll move that over. Oops, I brought in an extra zero. Let me fix that. There we go. Negative two over 3,000 becomes negative one over 1,500. I'm sorry, I brought in an extra zero. 
and then that equals our 19. So then we need to divide both sides by one over 1500. So that'll give us our Q is equal to 28,500. So if our Q is equal to 28,500, what is that going to give us for our profit? So for our D of Q, that's going to look like So going back into this equation right here, with our Q of 28,500, and then we can finish it down. So typing it all into the calculator, it looks like we're going to get $9.50. cents. So the revenue will be maximized when our ticket price is $9.50. And that means that we would have 28,500 tickets being sold.